Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to show that a particular function is an eigenfunction of an operator. And it will also allow us to find the eigenvalue at the same time. And we're gonna kill two birds with one stone because this also, this also will show you how to verify that a function is an eigenfunction for the Schrodinger equation, in particular, the Hamiltonian operator. So the example that we're going to use are the solutions to the particle in a box, the one-dimensional particle in a box, which I told you is some constant a times the sine of an integer n times pi over a all times x. And we want to prove that the Schrodinger equation actually has this function as a solution. So we'll need to show that. And the way that we start is by writing out the Hamiltonian operator. And you can do this for any operator, but I'm just going to show how these functions are eigenfunctions for the Hamiltonian operator. So here it is, negative h bar squared over 2m, the second derivative with respect to x, plus some potential function, like so. However, in the case of a particle in a box, our potential function just equals zero. So when I write the Hamiltonian operator acting on a function, it becomes negative h bar squared over 2m, second derivative of that function with respect to x. And we're going to calculate what specifically that is. Negative h bar squared over 2m, second derivative with respect to x. I'm going to put my function right in there. a times sine n pi over a x. Let's get the first derivative of that function. The first derivative becomes d dx of n pi over a times a cosine n pi over a times x. And that was using the chain rule. And then when I perform one more derivative, I get negative n pi over a squared times a sine n pi over a x, like so. So that's the differential operator. Now let's apply this constant operator here, negative h bar over 2m times negative n pi over a squared times a sine n pi over a x. And I'm going to combine all that together because that is actually going to be equal to e because I'm seeing that I get that original function back right there. So cleaning this up a little bit, I get n squared h bar squared pi squared over 2 m a squared, like that, times my original function, and there's my e. So as you can see, we verified that the original function was an eigenfunction of the operator, and we were also able to find the eigenvalue, which happens to be the energy of the system. And this would we would say that this is E n because it's the energy level for the nth eigenfunction.